hello friends and my dear students today my topic is cpu scheduling i got lot of request to have a topic cpu scheduling now what is cpu scheduling and related to cpu scheduling uh, the students have a query that they want to know about the different type of algorithms to schedule the cpu now to read cpu scheduling first we need to know about the process about the states of any process about cpu scheduling optimization and then finally move to the type of algorithm so when exactly when we say a process now what exactly a process is so we can say a process is a program in execution a program in execution so we can say that uh, we say we make a code a sequence of program sequence of code sequence of instruction um, instructions and that leads to a process that means when you start uh, executing that program then that program becomes a process so simple words in simple words if you want to understand a process we say a program in execution is a process now we deal uh, say that we are in a multi programming environment try to understand my concern uh, there are different types of operating system because cpu scheduling is comes under the topic of operating system so what are the different types of operating system you must be aware of before understanding the concept of cpu scheduling so under the category of types of operating system we do have a concept of multi programming now what exactly the multi programming is now multi programming says it facilitate the multi user environment multi user uh, performing multiple tasks so we can say multitasking is going on so to have the maximum utilization of cpu maximum utilization of cpu so our target is to have the maximum utilization of the cpu so to have the maximum utilization of cpu in multi programming environment so we need scheduling of the processor so why do we in need of this scheduling we we are in need of this scheduling because we are in a state where n number of users are performing multiple tasks and we are in a multi programming environment so we need to require the maximum utilization of my cpu so for that reason i need to schedule the cpu now i just told you about a process now when we talk about process now it has different states a process can be in different states and that states of process are the one is new ready running waiting and finally terminated so when we talk about a process in a multi programming environment a process can be in either of these five states so what do you exactly means a new a new means a process a newly created process and all the information i hope you must be aware of that it is stores in a pcb pcb is nothing but a con uh, process control block where we store it is a kind of a data structure and through program counter i think uh, in uh, previous semesters you must have heard about the term program counter i just need to highlight the word program counter it is a term related to a computer architecture what exactly the program counter is so just to give you a brief idea that how these instructions are fetched from memory the program counter fetches the instruction so it is nothing but we say program counter is a register which contains the address of the instruction to be executed 
next so what exactly mean we mean that now suppose if i'll take some array of uh, instructions suppose my data is being stored in memory and this is suppose i'll take in uh, binary or hexadecimal addresses so if suppose this is my 500 address and program counter contains an address as 500 so this 500 is in program counter means i need to fetch the address or the data of address 500 so we can say program counter is a register which contains the address which informed the cpu to take the address from program counter and fetch the instruction so i come back to the topic of program counter or process so i hope you must have understood the topic of program counter that uh, the definition of program counter so I'll come back to the states of a process. We say that program uh, the all the processes are stored in uh, process control block and it is being fetched through program counter. So these states are new. A process is created, ready. A process is ready. Now, whenever we want to schedule a CPU to the processes, all the processes uh, uh, are there in the queue. So we say if any uh, queue is maintained, so we can say P1, P2 and P3 is in a queue. So they are in the ready state. They are just ready to be assigned to CPU. We can say they are just ready to assign to CPU. So we can say ready state that yes, the next turn, we can say the next turn is of P1 process. So it is in the ready state. So we can say running. Now suppose if P0 is being held by cpu now cpu is running the p0 process so this is my running state so p1 is my uh, i can say it is ready to assign it is ready state p0 is in uh, running state waiting state we can say p2 and p3 p3 are not in the queue they are at the back end tail of the queue so they are in the waiting state so terminated means once p0 leaves cpu completes its execution that means uh, it is in the terminated state. So I hope you got the concept of uh, what exactly the different states of a uh, process so uh, I just to repeat in a second uh, we are just dealing with CPU scheduling in CPU scheduling why we we are in need of CPU scheduling it is maximum utilization of my CPU in multi-programming environment I need to understand a process the process is nothing but it is a code of instructions or uh, program which I need to run uh, in multi-programming environment it is a kind of an operating system I need maximum utilization of CPU and different states of CPU as process can be in out of any of these five states now how these five states are related to each other let me show you all this uh, now see we can see that I'll just make a small diagram which says uh, a different process states how they are associated with each other then we will move to the next important topic uh, now we can see how they are uh, related to each other I hope you would be able to understand through this small diagram okay now I hope it is clear to all of you so this is my new state now this process is getting admitted so we can say this process is getting admitted this is my ready state this is my ready state so from ready state I'll just go to the running state then I, I might be from running state go to a waiting state and again from waiting state to a ready state might be a possibility so this will be the possibility when we are going into uh, some of this kind of an event I'll just explain you just uh, try to understand this then uh, again we are just going to running state and running so this is my IO or any event wait condition will be there so this is the scheduler dispatch we always hear scheduler dispatch here it is my terminated and that means finally I have exited from the so these are actually my process state condition now the flow try to understand the flow now suppose a new process any process comes in P0 it admits 
right it goes into a ready queue and it goes into a ready queue through a dispatcher scheduler dispatcher now what is actually a scheduler we have a, a concept of scheduler and scheduler is nothing it is a module which is responsible to dispatch the process to the cpu so a dispatcher a scheduler dispatcher uh, takes a process from ready queue and just uh, it's just dispatch it the cpu then it becomes and it comes into a running state now a process p0 suppose enters into a ready queue goes into a running state and it might be possible that from the running state it may terminate it or it may go into the waiting state now what will be the conditions when a process from running state goes to a terminated or a waiting state from running state to terminated state suppose it has completed its task so we can say when a process completes its task okay so now uh, it's not in need so it's finally terminated and exit now when a running process comes from running state to waiting state what will be the condition the condition will be when we are in any waiting state when we are in request of any io device suppose any process is running and cpu is there uh, and that particular process needs a printer any io devices so we can say need of an io device so if it there is any io request then any process will go from running to waiting state so we can say any io event then from running to waiting state then it might be possible that any higher priority process comes in then again this waiting queue from waiting queue it goes to a ready queue and again it will dispatch the cpu to that process and then finally it completes and terminate now there might be a possibility that any process from running state either go to termination state waiting state or it might get into again into a ready state it has been interrupted by certain uh, uh, reasons it might be uh, any interrupt uh, like suppose any higher priority process comes in and it wants to interrupt that particular process any software routine wants to run so uh, we can say that now the process is coming coming from the running state to the ready state so now i hope you have understood the concept of process state and uh, it is very important to understand when a process comes from running to waiting waiting to ready ready to terminate it because in my next video i will be discussing about a very important difference between primitive versus non primitive because to understand the scheduling concept to understand the scheduling concept it is very important to understand the underlying difference between primitive and non primitive so for primitive and non primitive you should be comfortable with the states that when a process goes from new to ready ready to running running to waiting waiting to terminating terminating to ready state and running to termination so uh, i hope guys uh, you must have understood the concept of cpu scheduling why we are in need of cpu scheduling uh, so you can say in a simple words you can say in a just to uh, uh, conclude i just want to say uh, in a multi programming environment process needs to be uh, assigned uh, to the cpu in some manner so they mu must be uh, scheduled in some manner and for that scheduling we need uh, certain algorithms and for that algorithm we need to understand the process states and to understand the process states we need to understand the difference between primitive and non primitive scheduling so guys uh, that's all for today and in our next uh, video we'll be covering up the primitive and non primitive thank you so much